I'm in Manchester today, I'm going to photograph the CIS building, uh, the reason for that is I read an article recently saying that the building is for sale and it's, it's a very modern historic building if you like, it was first started to build it in 1959, it was completed in 1962 and at the time it was the tallest building in the UK that lasted for about a year. However, in Manchester itself, it remained the tallest building until 2006. So it's always been that iconic building in Manchester. If you come to Manchester, you would always see it. And I thought I'd take a few pictures before they do something with it, take the sign off it, or even knock it down and build. I don't know what they're gonna do. But uh, there we go. The building is no longer in use. In fact, as far as I am aware, all this stuff moved over here, just across the road, into this new modern building. This is One Angel Square. There are new buildings going up all over Manchester, it seems to be the thing, just to throw a new high rise up, it will make good photography. For this I used a tilt shift lens, I'm going to be doing a video on that and just my techniques. And this is our finished picture. This has just been in Lightroom, just done the colouring, it's always important, now we're going to put it in Photoshop. So first thing we do is copy the background layer, Control and J. We're going to be non-destructive on this. So our first job is to convert this to black and white. So we go on Image, Adjustments and Black and White. This brings up a little box here with sliders on, but this isn't necessary because we're going to cut out each individual section and work on it separately. So all we can do is just press OK and get rid of this. Now we're going to start making selections. We're going to start with the sky, so we go to the top and we press select and go down to the sky. And Photoshop will work its magic. And there we go, that's a pretty good selection. That's what we need to do is save this selection. So go up to the top again, press select. And go down to save selection. Remember to rename all your selections, it would make your life a lot easier. So obviously we're going to call this one Sky. And then press OK. And then what we're going to do is continue to all the different parts of the building. So you've got the side, the two bit, the front bits and the foreground bit. Remember saving each selection every time and naming it make your own life easier. Now with all our selections made, we're going to start loading and working on them. So you go down to select, load selection, look in your drop down menu there in the little box, dialog box and we're going to click on sky, press OK and that will load our selected sky. Now there are many ways that we can change the tones of our selection. We're going to work on two today, so we go to adjustments and for this one we're going to do the ex exposure adjustment. So you just click on that and that will bring it up from this. We're going to make it darker. Obviously if your picture needed to make it lighter you can do that. And what you've got to do, you just got to keep working on it until you get it just how you want it. So we'll, we'll do that. 
Now sometimes it doesn't look quite right around the edge of your building so what you need to do then is reselect the sky, use your clone stamp and just paint around it. It won't touch your building because you've reselected your sky. There we go, I'm uh, quite happy with that, that'll do. So we'll deselect it by pressing Ctrl and D. And then we start on our next selection. So we'll load our next selection, that's select, load selection. And we'll start on one of the front parts of the building. And instead of exposure, we're gonna use curves on this one. You've got to remember now, this is your picture. So just have a think about how you want each part of your pictures to look, how you want each selection to look. How's the light going to hit it? It's your choice. So I'm going to work on each selection and uh, we're going to see just what we finish up with and then decide what to do from there. So we're quite happy with that now we've done all the selections now we're going to put in a new layer command option shift and e i think what we need to do now is make that sky a little bit more exciting so with our new layer selected we're going to go on to select and then sky press ok and then from there what we're going to do is go down to the bottom right we're going to click on new layer then we're going to go on to filter render and then clouds there we go obviously this needs uh, amending a little bit so what we'll do we'll make this an adjustment layer it's a rectangle with the circle in it and we're going to paint out the bits we don't want. So remember painting in black while the adjustment section on the right hand side is highlighted. So make your brush nice and big and we'll just paint out the bits that we don't want. Now from there what we're going to do, we're going to blur these clouds. So again we go on to filter, we're going to blur and then motion blur. This brings you up a little uh, dialog box where you can change the direction of the clouds. And if you use a slider at the bottom, you can see just what effect they're going to have. It is a case of this is your personal choice, so play around with it, just see what you get. And you can repeat this process as many times as you want until you're happy with the end result. That's okay, so what we'll do is add another layer onto that now. Now, um, do something different. The CIS sign, what I'm going to do is bring that out in the colour it should be, which is blue. So we can just make a copy of our background layer. And then we'll make a copy of our top layer. And bring our copy of the background underneath it so we do have the original colored version underneath so we're going to do make our top layer an adjustment layer so we're going to paint on in black which brings this lovely blue color through I will work on this and have a look how it turns out at the end and there's our finished sign Got to say I'm not 100% happy with the sky, so I'm going to go back down to that and let's uh, see if we can alter the sky a little bit. It looks like the building was on fire, isn't it, with smoke coming from the roof. So let's have a look at what we can do. So we're going to go down to the, the sky layer and we're going to repeat our process by selecting the sky and following the whole process again, going into filter, render, then clouds. And then we're going to do the blurring through the filters, with the noise blur. And let's have a look. Let's have a redo of the clouds and see what we can get up to. Well, I've jumped ahead of it here, and uh, I've changed the shape, so we're going across the picture rather than out of the uh, top of the building. So 
So I'm going to do a bit of a motion blur here. We're going to change the direction of these uh, clouds as well. Play about with that and keep repeating this process here until I get the desired effect. Remember what you need to be doing as well once you finish your clouds is having a good look around your picture, making sure everything's tidy, nothing's spilt over and just take any appropriate measures to fix that. There we go, this is our finished image. Well, I think it's finished. I'm, I'm not too sure about the colouring there. Uh, I might have another try in Lightroom. Put this actually, the finished Photoshop part of it, back into Lightroom and we'll have a bit of a play about, a bit of jiggery pokery as they say, and see what we can come up with. So we're back into Lightroom straight from Photoshop and I think the first thing we're going to do is just decrease the exposure by 0.15. Not too much. Highlights and shadows 100% on each, and it's minus highlights plus on the shadows. And the temperature just slightly increase that. And the tint as well. So the temperature comes to plus 8, the tint plus 1. And it's starting to change the colour of the picture, and I do like that better, I've got to say. So I'm going to go to the whites and the blacks. Just increase the whites a little bit. Probably plus 30. And take the blacks down to 55, minus 55. And then the clarity. I think the clarity always looks good, doesn't it, when you start doing that. So I think I'll increase the clarity. About 30. And the vibrance and saturation, not too much, plus 15 ish. And plus about 5. Now, I think what we could do is make the top and the bottom a little bit darker by putting gradient masks on. Nothing too drastic. It just sometimes makes the picture stand out. So you do this on two separate masks. Lightroom has been updated recently and it, they do a really good job on these. And if you put a check mark in the show overlay, it does come up red and you can uh, see where your mask is just like that. And if you wanted to lighten or darken any part of your picture, you could actually put a radial gradient in. It's a great way of doing this. And there's our finished image.